Do you want to know the best way to lay out the tool panels in Rough Animator? Find out how I lay out my tools in today's episode of the Expat Animator. Okay, so we're going to look at Rough Animator here on my Mac, and you'll see this is how I lay out my tool settings. Uh, so if you go to window, you can see we've got five different tool options and each one of them are on because you have the checkbox. So if I turn tools off, see that one goes away. And as I, if I want to just red, click the red circle on these, they'll go away. And if I want to bring them back, then I just select on what I want to bring back. So real quick here, let me just show you. I'm going to close everything down and you can see what I do is I have my canvas and... I extend it to the full width of the window. And then I start adding my tools one by one. And I like the tools to be up here in the top left corner, which is similar to how the iPad is set up. And you know, you can move this anywhere you want, but especially on the Mac, with the, with the iPad, not so much. But uh, let's go ahead and just bring these up here. So the tools and the tools options I like together because as you check a different tool, this tool options box changes what it shows. So I like to have those two together. And then I like the timeline on the top here because that mimics how it's set up on the iPad. So if I switch from animating in rough animator from one device to the other, the, the layout is similar and I don't get confused of where things are as much. Uh, preferences, I like to put preferences below the tools in the tools, tool options box. And then underneath that, I bring up my color palette. And you can change different, um, this is just the regular color palette that comes with Apple's Mac system. So you can change that to whatever setting that you want. And I kind of like to, this is, this is the layout that I use when I'm animating. And then it gives me the rest of this area to draw in. And if I need more drawing area, what I can do is I can just close down uh, areas of my toolbox, or in this case, I just turned off my timeline palette, and that allows me to have almost my full canvas here to draw on and still see all of my tool options on the left side here. So let's go ahead and uh, when I'm animating, I usually keep everything open because I am usually need to especially use the timeline here as I'm adding and deleting frames and making cycles and everything. So let's take a quick look at the iPad here. And I'm just going to bring my iPad and put it on top here so I can keep going here. And... By default here, let's take a look at some of the inter interface. You've got the tool options here on the left, and you've got your layer palette on the top. And as far as I know, in the iPad interface, you can't bring that timeline down to the bottom. Um, it may be possible to do that. I haven't figured out how to do it. And you might notice that uh, other video editing or animation softwares, the timeline usually can be down at the bottom. And so that might be a little confusing for people when they get into Rough Animator, but it kind of really doesn't matter if it's at the bottom or the top. You just start getting used to where your timeline is. And so if I go ahead and click here on the wheel, the settings here, there's some settings within Rough Animator that we can adjust. Uh, specifically, let's go in and uh, let's look at the interface here. So if you're left-handed, you can basically switch all of your tool panels from the left side of the page to the right. So if I turn that on, we're going to see see how everything kind of bumped over here to, to the right-hand side. But it keeps your timeline still at the top. So that's one way to move palettes around within the iPad interface. I'm going to switch that back real quick here. And then the other thing you can do is the interface scale you can change that all the way down to 50%. And what that's going to do is it's going to shrink stuff so that you have a little more working area, but it's harder to see stuff. So I think by default, this came at about 80% for me. So I'm going to switch it back to that. 
and um, you know you've got the ability to do some other things here but for the um, like pinching and zooming for the rotation of the canvas you can turn that on or off um, snap zoom and rotation so there's some things that you can turn on and off here in the settings but for the most part this is why this is similar to how I lay things out on my Mac so it's tool palettes on the left and timeline on the top and you'll notice here on the iPad version you've got this uh, expand arrow button here I'm gonna go ahead and click it and you can see all of the tool palettes go away and it gives you more area to draw on let me grab my brush tool here and this is giving us the ability to get everything out of the way quickly and let you draw real quick and then if you need a tool you could just click that and go back to you see your tool palettes that might be kind of nice on the Mac but I find that my Mac screen is bigger to draw on so I don't really need that option but basically uh, I try and keep the the two interfaces similar between devices so I don't get too confused because there are differences in how the tool palettes are laid out between the devices so if you're switching back and forth a lot uh, you might get a little confused uh, as to where a certain tool or something is is located but it's good to keep your palettes in a similar layout and I found let me switch back to my Mac here that this layout is the best for me and this is not how by default that your um, that the layout of the tool palettes are set up when you first load rough animator so you're gonna have to move things around and you know scale things to how you want them and um, and that's the one thing that's nice about the Mac versus the iPad is you have the ability to move things around and give yourself a little more room but either way uh, I like animating on both uh, platforms so it just depends on if I want to animate in the office or you know out on the road then I'll use my iPad so hopefully that helps and uh, maybe you have a different way of setting up your tool palettes but this is what works best for me and it's the best it's the most efficient way to get everything on the screen especially on the Mac so hopefully that helps and uh, let me know if you have some suggestions for how I could set up my tools a little differently or more efficient and maybe I'm missing something so let me know in the comments and that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. My name is Patrick Davidson, the expat animator. See you next time.